feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. But it's a- Welcome back to another episode of The Shrimp Tank, coming to you virtually from Seattle and the Pacific Northwest. And today, heck, we're even down in the Bay Area with our, our co-host. More on that on a minute. Listen, if you want to learn how to start, grow, or run a successful business, This right here is the podcast for you. It is the podcast of record. This is where street smarts and book smarts collide. I'm Dan Whedon, and my co-host today, coming out of the Bay Area, is Linda Popke. Linda and I will be interviewing our guest, Steve Bean. Steve, who I've known for quite a while, and I've been waiting to have him on the show, is one of the founding partners of True Benefits based in Seattle. True Benefits is an employee benefits practice helping employers maximize their ROI by delivering the best outcomes to them and uh, their clients, of course. Welcome, Steve. Listen, you can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. We're on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and YouTube. We are ubiquitous. We come to you from about a dozen cities, including the mothership, in Atlanta, Boston, Boca Raton, about a dozen cities. So listen to them as well. But we we like it that you listen to us a little bit more. Now, before we bring on Steve to learn both more about him and his business, hello, Linda. Hi, Dan, how are you? Uh, Well, outside of the little teleprompter challenges (laughs) I had in the beginning, I'm doing fine. Hey, listen, I hope it's okay with you. I brought a guest. Oh, okay. A special Look, guest. Now, this is terrible oh, radio. This is terrible radio, but it works in the podcast. I've got my Russell Wilson bobblehead here. You see Russ uh, shaking his head at you here, Linda? He's shaking his head, but you know what? His fingers look okay, and I think he's got a damaged finger. He needs a bandage on that finger there. Yeah, I, I brought Russ because he's not working right now. He's out a few <laughs> weeks with a damaged finger uh, off of Aaron Donald's helmet. And so he didn't have anything to do. So I asked Russ to join us. Uh, Yeah, so he's, I I know that you are more of a 49ers faithful being out of the Bay Area uh, and that there's quite a rivalry, but uh, I'm guessing that you at least have a small appreciation for Russell Wilson. Oh, absolutely. And we especially like him when he's not playing against us, but when he's playing anybody else, that's okay. (laughs) That's okay. okay. Well, Russ, you know, uh, and and I know you work with a lot of business clients, Linda. Russ went something like 169 consecutive games to start his career before he got injured. And now he's out for a few. Uh, And working with employers, you you probably are very aware of the importance of uh, employee health and, and wellness and happiness and all of that, aren't you? Absolutely. And I think it's become even more important as we come out of this pandemic. We understand these things that this is something we we can't ignore. We have to really pay attention to. Well, the good news is is we have a guest today. Steve Bean works in the employee benefit world, Linda. And so, Steve, I'm going to bring you in. First of all, welcome. I know we had you lined up for quite a while. Thank you for being here today. It's my pleasure. Uh, Delighted for the chance for a conversation. And uh, always a good, it's a good storyline when it starts off with a, a football analogy. And, and Russell Wilson, it can't, it can't be all too bad. But listen, Russ is hurt. Uh, but I bet you in your business, you've got a ton of conversations going on with clients about employees, whether it's their health and wellness, their safety, their happiness, uh, their, their medical coverages, their 401. I mean, there's probably a ton of benefits that, that you've got to deal with on that end. Tell us a little bit about your practice. Tell us about True Benefits and what you do to help your clients. Yeah, True Benefits is an employee benefit consulting firm. Uh, we do work with business owners, with uh, nonprofit executive directors, and a lot of CFOs um, to help them refine their people and culture strategy and storyline. Uh, you know, a big part, uh, like the NFL, a big part of any employer is how to attract and retain the key talent to make sure that you're competitive and that you're thriving as an organization. So we definitely start those the conversations with our clients at that highest level to make sure that it all makes sense in light of their 
competitive environment, their turnover, um, and, and really make sure that they've got a, a strategy in place and then take it down to the more tactical and granular levels of how to actually make decisions and plan designs and, and make sure those are communicated effectively with employees and uh, you know stay compliant with all the regulations that, uh, that employer sponsored plans have to do. But it really has got to start on that strategy and it's got to make sense and it's custom designed for, for every employer because what you know a strategy that makes sense in one industry for one employer um, it may not be the right one for a different firm. And that's part of the fun of, of putting together that right combination of players and, and uh, investment. So Steve, uh, fascinating. And, and I've got to believe with what's going on in the world now, we hear about the great resignation and everybody wants to leave and people can't get employees. The focus on benefits today has got to be much, much stronger than it was even a year or two ago. What's changed for you and, and what can you recommend to employers to, to do the best they can in this this unprecedented situation? Yeah, it, it's a good question, Linda, and, it, and it's got a good insight behind it that, that this conversation has evolved, you know, certainly through COVID. Um, you know, we've always tried to make this conversation a strategic level one for the business owner, for the executive director. You know, sometimes when we engage with clients, they kind of hear benefits and immediately they think, oh, that's human resources. And hey, you know, let me direct you down to the HR manager. And those are very important people that we work very, very, very effectively with. Um, but what we're seeing right now on, on really a societal and kind of a labor supply is it's, it's a strategic question. And if you can't get people or you can't, um, they, they accept somebody else's job offer instead of yours, or maybe they're just sitting out, you know, like you say, as you referenced the great resignation, you know, we, we, I think just the landscape has changed a lot in, in these past 12 and 18 months about people and, and their, what they're looking for, for their family, for their job, for their commute. Can I live, can I work remotely and live in a, a different part of the world? So employers have a lot of, of new things to think about. And, and these things are not just, you know, which medical insurance company should I partner with and should we raise our deductible? Uh, you know, those are tactical and, and they'll, they'll eventually need an answer, but it's much more strategic about, you know, who are we? What are we going to do? What can we work with? How do we form and continue our culture if people are remote or remote part-time or they live in other parts of the country? Um, you know, do we as an organization need to evolve our identity? And if so, do we have the right people on board to, to help us achieve that? So, you know, I, I guess I, I'd like to kind of keep on this whole virtual uh, commentary. And, and, you know, really, while I think this may have been happening, the pandemic certainly accelerated the thought of, uh, I can hire, if I'm, a, if I'm an, an employer, I can hire anybody I want anywhere in the world, potentially, depending on what that business is. And that's going to con continue to evolve what are what are just a couple of things that if you were to if I was to ask you based on what you know based on what you've experienced look into your crystal ball Steve what is coming down the pike that employers are not necessarily thinking of right now when it comes to a more virtual workforce what what should they be preparing for uh I think culturally, um, you know, again, how, how do we as an organization and, and just take, you know, us here in the Pacific Northwest, if we've been a Seattle or maybe we had Seattle, Portland offices and we've got our identity, um, how, how do we bring on people from other parts of the country who and how do we does our culture need to evolve and change or do we try and adopt them and have them kind of, you know, fit in more to what we have historically been? So I think there's some and a lot of times these are conversations about business owners who maybe have been this has been their business for five years, 10 years, 20 years. And the idea of are we going to fundamentally change our culture in response to a more diverse workforce? That's a that's a question that needs a good, serious answer with some thought behind it, because uh, to, be, to, to say a quick yes might pull you in directions that you may or may not be emotionally ready for and, and practically and logistically ready for uh, to say no mean you might be missing out on opportunities for real talent and, and diversity and new markets that you didn't have in the past. So uh, so I think that's one is kind of the devolved the, 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 the geographic um, uh, spread and, and what that means for culture and how do we how do we in, how do we and who do we want to become and, and continue to evolve um, I think secondarily there are things just around you know cybersecurity and I know you've had guests on that you know when, when we've got home-based businesses that they're a lot more difficult a lot more uh, potential um, uh, you know unlock side doors that the trouble can can come in uh, so I think those are some of the other ones but um, that, that that notion of, of kind of 
expanding our thought process for not only employees and talent, but potential future markets. Are we ready? Do we want it? And how do we achieve that? So I see a little bit getting away from the pandemic a little bit. We keep hearing about generational things and things being different and millennials and I guess what's coming next after millennials, Gen Z, they have different um, understanding and different expectations about what they want from an employer. So how do you help employers kind of, you know, as we, we still have baby boomers, we have Gen X, and now we have a different set of generations coming in. How do you help kind of reconcile that? Yeah, by, by bringing some of that awareness. And, and again, depending on, you know, if we're talking to the business owner, you know, maybe of a certain age, uh, you know, 50, 60 something, and, and they, hopefully they've got some, some good, talented uh, managerial supervisory people in some different age brackets that have some of those appreciations. But make sure that, that again, there's very intentional conversations around that and calling it out. If it hasn't, maybe, maybe it's kind of been sitting on the periphery of somebody's awareness, like, oh, yeah, that, 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 that's probably out there. But hey, like let's let's put some focus on it and let's speak to what that means again around the you know the say uh, designing a benefit plan design that's going to be motivational and it's going to help us attract younger folks or maybe more mature folks you know we, we can do lots of things in those ways but there are benefits for example one that i've, I've really been pleased with is um, helping uh, where an employer can take a more active role in helping their employees retire student debt and, and I think that's a great one for so many industries where, you know, if you've got a workforce that's on the younger side, maybe they're coming out of, of with college debt or grad school debt. And, you know, you can talk to them about a great medical plan and you can talk about your great 401k plan that's going to be beneficial to them, you know, 30 and 40 years into the future. But when you're talking to somebody who's got student debt payments every month, it's like, hey, retirement seems like a long ways away and not all that relevant. What really is the pebble in my shoe today is how do I make my, you know, how do I continue to make these loans and, and will my employer help me retire these student debts? So, so I think those are some of the things that with some, some intentional thoughts and conversations, you can, an employer can, can build and design and communicate a benefit plan that's going to be attractive to lots of different generations, lots of different family situations, you know, the single employee versus the full family with three kids still at home versus the empty nesters and what are they looking for? There are solutions for those, um, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen magically and it's not going to happen without some thought and some uh, intentionality behind it. So I've got a question that you may not be able to answer, Steve. I, I and so I, I didn't even save it for hot or not or plead the fifth. <laughs> you know, and and I, I hate going back because I know people are COVID weary. But what surprises the heck out of me is that if you would have told me 18 months ago when when nobody was working because everything was shut down that we'd get to this point and employers who have a ton of demand for their stuff can't find staff can't find workers. I, I would have been shocked. I mean, literally shocked as said, uh, people aren't, heck, even in our, our, our destination market that we have down the street, they had to shut down their sandwich making and, and, and barbecue silo because they, they couldn't get enough people to, to, to put the burgers together, right? Mm -hmm. Why is this happening? What is the, what is the root cause that people across the country are not, I mean, why aren't they going back to work? Uh, there, there's an interesting article actually just today in the New York Times. So I'll, I'll, I'll take some of those good thoughts that they put together about that. When one of those, especially if you look at maybe uh, folks in the service sector or, or somewhere on the more modest end of the wage, you know, the wage and earning scale, um, part of the thing um, that was cited in this article was that People have a little more financial reserves now than than they have had in the past, and those have come from you know state and federal, you know programs, paycheck protection, things like that. Uh, and and so one thought process was that that folks can be a little more choosy for um, accepting job offers. You know they don't quite have the you know, rent is due next week and I've got to get something right now. Uh, and so sometimes people are being a little more um, picky about where they're going. Um, and and that, that definitely tends to manifest itself, as you said, in you know, the restaurants, you simply can't get help. Or um, I, I noticed that it takes a lot longer for me to choke, check out from the grocery store. And I'm kind of looking around, it's like, well, why don't they, why don't they bring up another checker? Why aren't there at least two more checkers open? We got, you know, eight people in every line. And, and a lot of it is just that, that worker. Um, so I think that's part of that's part of it. And then I know for us, you know, again, true benefits, we're, we're based downtown Seattle. 
and as a lot of employers are, and you've got the, 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 you know, just the commute and just kind of that notion of, boy, you know, in the past, we all just kind of did it because that's what it took to have a career and to work in an office environment and to get to from where you live to where you worked. And, and we all kind of put up with that because we hadn't really had a big taste of something different. But I think, you know, with the COVID and the pandemic and, and a lot of folks being able to work from home, you know, there's a lot of people that are kind of now staring at that 45 minute hour, hour and a half each way commute and say, that's a pretty big obstacle, you know, can I either find something closer to home? Can I work telecommute? Can I change employer for different flexibility? So I think those are some of the things, Dan, you've got a little, little maybe a little bit of a, of a financial cushion uh, in, in some sectors that folks can be more choosy and not having to dash for uh, any opening. Uh, and then you've got other people that are kind of re they're doing the math differently for their family. And, you know, Hey, can we, can we sell the second car? Can we do something different? Can we do daycare sharing? Can we do other things to lower our family cost structure so that our family revenue, you know, can, can operate on a different model that might be more family friendly or more lifestyle friendly. Well, we have to be, we have to be sponsor friendly right now, Steve. Uh, we're going to pay the bills. We're going to take a short break to hear from today's spotlight sponsor. And when we come back with our guest, Steve Bean for a hot or not section of the show, we're going to talk about wellness, wellness in the workforce. Don't walk away. We'll be right back with more of the shrimp tank. Does this sound like you? I'd love to write a book, but I just don't have the time. In fact, I'm not sure where to even start. Maybe you have a compelling story to share or valuable advice for clients and prospects. If only you could get the story out of your head and into a published format. Think you don't have time to write a book? Think you aren't a good enough writer to get your message across? Think this all sounds too overwhelming? Think again. At Leverage to Market Associates, we help aspiring authors transform that long-stuck book idea into an attractive published work. If you've written most of your book, we can help you edit your work and drive it through the production process. If you're not sure where to start, we'll coach you through the creative process to organize your thoughts and create a compelling book outline. And if you're just not comfortable writing a book yourself, we can ghostwrite for you. Contact Leverage to Market Associates for a complimentary evaluation of your nonfiction book concept today and bring your book to life. Hey, well, I want to welcome you back to the Shrimp Tank, where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound area and beyond. I'm Linda Popke, and we are here today. Our guest is Steve Bean with True Benefits, and our next segment is Hot or not. So Dan, what's hot or not? Well, we're going to find out what Steve thinks is hot or not. Steve, you're going to answer Linda and I's questions after we pepper you with a whole bunch of them on business, on life, on who knows, maybe we'll talk some food and libations. You never know. <laughs> um, but at the end, you win absolutely nothing. So <laughs> I mentioned wellness. Hot or not, Steve, having an in-house wellness advisor. If it's a large enough employer, um, then I think you could you could get the 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 value on investment, the VOI, uh, which is you know probably the better index than just a return on investment, the ROI, you know, because the, the value expands that the, the proposition and, and that. So uh, with a large enough employer, absolutely, I think otherwise you can outsource that. And, and I'll just say quickly that I think on when we think of wellness, that's not only certainly physical wellness, uh, but as we're all experiencing in the pandemic, that is the mental health wellness, that is the, the wealth uh, or, or you know, kind of the overall financial wellness as well. So wellness is no longer just, you know, did I get my steps in? Am I drinking my water? Am I getting my points? Um, it, it, it rightly so has expanded into the mental health and to the financial health, which also have big impacts on, on a person's performance and overall quality of life. That's great. Um, I got another hot or not for you because in my experience, uh, a lot of um, benefits firms used to offer multiple plans with benefits and now sometimes they offer fewer. So is it hot or not to offer a choice of, of, um, of multiple plans with benefits? 
Yeah, I, I think having at least a couple of choices is really nice. Um, I'd say, you know, the most common one that we see with our client base is where, you know, an employer will offer kind of a traditional medical plan with a, you know, a deductible, a preferred provider network of docs and hospitals to see. You've got, you know, office visit co-pays and things like that. Um, and then match that side by side with a, a health savings account type plan, high deductible health plan paired with, a, with an HSA. And, and I like at the very minimum, I like that pairing because they really are different concepts. You know, you're not just offering, you know, vanilla ice cream and French vanilla, uh, you know, with not much of a distinction between them. It's like, hey, these really are different concepts. They're going to appeal to different people. And uh, so I think having at least a couple is great. If you get to, you know, three and four, again, depending on the size of the employer, maybe the geographic spread, maybe those are justified, but I think it's easy to, um, to overcomplicate it. And then that makes understanding and communication more of a challenge. Got it. Hey, Steve, I'm, I actually have to go back to something that you said in your answer to mine, which uh, caught my attention. And, and you're right on the wellness, the, the mental side of it is so important. And, and this year, uh, whether it's been athletes, entertainers, celebrities, uh, business people, we're hearing more and more people talking much more openly and frankly about that. My question for you is this, in what you've seen, are employers actually getting this? I mean, you know, because it's one thing to, to say, yes, I understand, I hear you, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's another to actually put something into practice and saying, not only do I hear you, I'm, I want to help you. Are you seeing a shift in employers' thinking regarding mental, well, mental health and well-being? Yes. Seeing a shift, in, and, and I think that, that shift is evident in a couple of places, Dan. You know, one is probably engaging, again, more senior leadership owners, you know, executive directors for nonprofits, you know, it kind of making sure that that's a topic acknowledged and recognized at the very highest levels of the organization, not just the HR team who, you know, maybe field some of these questions or, you know, has to deal with some of the consequences or, or employment situations that might come up where there could be mental health uh, uh, challenges for anybody. But so really a shift, one shift is getting that acknowledged and, and openly discussed at the highest levels of the, the organization. And then secondarily, as we're going through right now with open enrollment and the, the you know, kind of the reminder and the communication uh, to employees and plan participants around their benefits, making sure that those mental health benefits are featured and talked about and reminded because we are getting to the point of, of weariness, you know, kind of COVID weary, COVID worn down. And, you know, somebody who maybe has kind of the, the, the mental wherewithal and the mental landscape to kind of, you know, gut it out for six months or even 12 months is like, man, we're getting, we're getting deep, 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 deep into these things and challenges that families are facing. And, and, you know, a lot of folks are kind of getting to the end of their, end of their, their rope and ready to say, Hey, you know what? I, I maybe can't do, can't continue doing this alone. What other resources are out there? What else can I be doing to maybe take some of the strain off or redirect me and, and my family members in a different, more positive way? Great. And, and Steve, I want to talk a little bit different uh, focus, which is I've seen a lot of companies over the last 12, 18 months kind of move inward because they had to to kind of survive. Hot or not, giving back to the community, is that something that we should be focused on now or should we focused on how do we keep our, our businesses growing and, and get the right employees? What's the balance on that? Hot or not? Yeah, I, well, I think it's hot. It's hot, again, to, to, to recall that there's kind of a continuum, and especially if an organization, you know, kind of, again, pre-COVID, um, under prior normal business operating, they could, they could do what they do, provide the, the value and the benefits and the services. And hopefully from that, there was some kind of a surplus that we could say, hey, let's, let's get back to our community financially. Let's allow folks to take uh, time off to go support the charities of their choice, or maybe we as, the, as an employer go do it together and you know, get, give uh, the opportunity to do that. You're very right in that we've all kind of had you know, all these external challenges and things, and we had to kind of uh, you know, draw the circle the wagons a little bit and say, man, we're in survival mode and, and, and how do we deal with this? As again, it's going to vary based on employer and based on industry. But I think as we all kind of emerge, hopefully in a new and better version of ourselves, uh, enterprise wide, as well as individuals and leaders of, of organizations. But as we emerge, hopefully we will, we will quickly be casting our, our gaze, you know, outside of our own circled wagons and say, okay, you know, we're, we're doing okay. We're back on the deal. We still have 
challenges and we got a, a strategy and a path ahead. But let's realize that there may be either individuals in our community or there may be other businesses or just the whole industry sectors who have got a tougher road ahead. And, and you know, what can we do to help them? Um, and that, you know, that might be, you know, uh, employing vets, for example, or, or there's, I, I'm happy to see, you know, increased conversations around um, um, hiring uh, former um, uh, incarceration, you know, folks. It's like, hey, let's, you know, these are people that can't be released from, you know, from, from these institutions with, with really closed doors and stony glares, um, you know, all around them. It's like, what can we do? So I think, yeah, I think as, as soon as employers on an individual basis and leadership teams can say, hey, great, you know, the ship's not going to capsize. We still got challenges, but we are moving forward. Now let's look around and see who we can help along the way. Hey, Steve, I know you parlez-vous Francais. I did a, did a little, <laughs> we did a little, our, our crack research staff figured that out. Nice. Uh, so hot or not, uh, speaking or knowing a second or third language as relates to, to work, maybe working with a more diverse uh, employee group. Huge, 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 huge. Yes, and 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 you're right. I, I do speak French. Uh, uh, love that. That's a big part of of kind of my um, you know, worldview. And, and my wife and I both enjoy. We love to travel. Um, but holy cow, you know, I mean, certainly Spanish. I think for most of us in the United States, anyway. Um, uh, I. I um, my wife and I are going to be traveling to Spain uh, in 2022, and, and I'm, I'm committed to start, uh, you know, studying and trying to trying to uh, get some Spanish down. Um, but yeah, absolutely. To not only not only acknowledge just the demographics, and again, really focusing on Spanish specifically with with the United States, but you know, there it 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 just allows you to connect in so much more of a mutual respectful way with your potential customer, with your potential client, potential business partner on a strategic level, and you know the the numbers and the demographics are there of of Spanish speaking folks that are you know in the United States that will continue to be here, and uh, I think that certainly. Um, any kind of a second language, I think, is good just for mental flexibility. But I think the opportunities and and really the cultural um, satisfaction of of really engaging folks in their native tongue um, shows a lot of respect and and I think is typically reciprocated with goodwill and and opportunities on the other side. Well, Steve, si quieres que practicar su español conmigo, uh, cuando tú quieres. <laughs> So Perfect. I said, if you want to practice Spanish with me whenever you want, go, go ahead. <laughs> I have to terrific. translate to French for him right now because he's still not up on his Spanish yet. <laughs> hey, Linda, go ahead and give him something in English. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you something really easy. Hot or not, pineapple on pizza. Love it. Yeah, ah. oh, oh, I should say on, on Canadian bacon. Yes, yeah, Canadian bacon, the old the old Hawaiian, love it. That's a, my, my, in fact, my, my favorite way to order pizza is half a uh, Canadian bacon with pineapple and, uh, and, and pepperoni and sausage on the other side. So you're speaking my love language. Well, there Steve, you, you, you might find this surprising, but we, we had some culinary people on here who might take umbrage with that answer. I'm just <laughs> telling <laughs> Hey, I, Dan, Dan I, I never, I never protested or professed to be, you know, highbrow in this whole thing. I'm just telling you what I like. <laughs> no, it's just, it's funny. We like to ask that question, and and you can imagine we get a variety of different answers. But listen, what we what we don't get necessarily a variety of is is uh, is breaking away for our break. We we're going to keep on that. We got one more to go, and then we're going to come back. So uh, we are going to take a break now with Steve Bean for our famous Hot or Not se section of the show. And when we come back, we might be doing a little talk about libations. So you're going to want to stick around. We're going to ask Steve an opinion about that, and I'm sure he has one. Uh, so uh, we'll be don't walk away. We'll be right back with more of the Shrimp Tank. Plead the Fifth is brought to you by our corporate sponsors. Ideal Life 360, Cornerstone Financial, First Underwriters Insurance, and the Kitsap Sun Newspaper. Please visit our website at www.shrimptankpodcast.com forward slash Seattle to learn more about these terrific companies. Now, back to the show. All right. Well, welcome back to the Shrimp Tank Seattle, where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound area and beyond. I'm the co-host this week, Linda Popke, and our guest today again is Steve Bean, who is the uh, founding partner, one of the founding partners of um, oh, of true benefits. Okay, okay. So Steve, now our next segment is plead the fifth. So do you know how this works? 
Uh, I could use a refresher. See what well, the latest I, version I, of the know, rules I, are. I don't, I don't know if you need your legal team right on hand to, to, <laughs> to find out, but Linda and I are going to ask you some some questions, which might we might be turning up the heat a little bit. And and you have the right to plead the fifth, but only once. So uh, choose carefully if you need that. But I don't think you're going to have any fair catches, uh, speaking of football. So here we go. I know you and I are both uh, fans of spirits and libations. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, Steve, on Plead the Fifth, your favorite cocktail. Do you like it neat, up, or on the rocks? Um, boy, my I, 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 it's going to depend on which, which, what is the cocktail there. What's uh, your favorite would, cocktail, Steve? What do you what What's your go-to? Um, it depends on the spirit. If I'm having if I'm having like a gin or something, then it'd be maybe a Negroni, and that on the rocks, a nice okay. a nice single nice single cube. Uh, if I'm having a Manhattan, typically that's neat. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So I, I'm a Manhattan, a Manhattan uh, connoisseur, I guess, and and uh, yes, we we want to have that with no ice on it. But yeah, I love a good Negroni too. Mm. So if Linda and I were coming over to your house uh, and you were serving and and we were at your disposal, what would you give us for a cocktail? Well, I'd, I'd first ask what kind of spirit you like, because uh, okay. I, I, I like to have a go-to cocktail for each kind of spirit. So let let me ask Linda, what what spirit would be your choice? Oh, let's say something with vodka. Vodka, uh, cosmopolitan. That works. Str straight okay. up, yep. A good, good, yep. well-made, uh, not sweet. You know, it's nice and tart. Got a good bright lime in it. But yeah, Cosmo would be my vodka uh, go-to. That sounds and, great. And as you heard I'm a bourbon guy, so you probably have the Manhattan ready for me, right? Manhattan is always a good one. Um, there's another very nice one that uses uh, um, Canton ginger liqueur and oh. uh, and lemon and bourbon. And then it has a little ginger beer floater on it for a little bit of a carbonation. So that one, uh, that's kind of a fresh twist on the, on a bourbon and lemon uh, core. Sound cool. So I got one for you. So we've had our drinks. Now you're at a dinner party. Hmm. You're seated next to someone you don't know. You've never seen them before. What's the first thing you say to them? And pass the salt is not an acceptable answer. So what do you say to them? Brand new person. Um, why what um why are you here you know kind of yeah why why are you here and, and i try to incorporate that with not only who do you know that's here you know kind of what's your connection um but i i love questions that start with why because they typically um they typically challenge a person a little bit more to the motivation or the the underlying stuff it's not a factual answer it's 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 their personal answer so yeah why are you here all right, Steve, uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, I, 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 I can't make it a why question, but uh, we know you're a Wharton alum, right? So, uh, and there's been many famous Wharton alums throughout the annals of that uh, fine university. Who's the most famous Wharton alum that you might have bumped into in the halls? Uh, you know, Dan, uh, my Wharton school was all done remotely through the American College as part of my one of my uh, professional credentials. So, yeah, I, I you bumped into nobody. In, I did not the have the chance. Yeah, did not have the chance to rub elbows with any of the uh, the movers and shakers. But uh, okay, they, so they, Linda, I've they, got, they, I've got they, to they did ask provide the academics behind it. Yeah, yeah, I've got to ask. I, I, I have a. I have to do a backup now because that was an unexpected. Uh, answer to the question. Uh, it was a, the right answer, but it was an unexpected. So uh, we found out you like board games too. All right. Well, so my our, our play the fifth. What board game might you have once in a while? Oh, I don't know. Cheated a little bit under the table. <laughs> what What's the board game that you might cheat on that nobody in your family knows? Uh, let's see. We just played one this weekend that is kind of a, a Robin Hood Sheriff of Nottingham uh, environment. <laughs> um, but it actually, it actually has, it has kind of a bluffing cheating mechanism built into the core part of the game to where you, you basically, uh, 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 draw some cards that have items on it, like apples and cheese and chickens and you know things like that. And you present to the sheriff um, in a closed envelope what what you're actually trying to import into town. And the sheriff can either open your envelope or not. And so the the whole thing is very much can you bluff and lie and cheat uh, to get it past the sheriff? So that's, and are you that's, good at that? Not really. I, 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 I don't lie. I'm a terrible liar. I, I don't lie. I've, uh, you, you know, for lots of reasons, but you know, among them is that I heard a great phrase when I was a kid that was saying, you know, just don't lie because they're too hard to remember later on. It's like, just tell the That's truth. Funny. And then your brain always defaults. And that always worked for me. 
That's true. So I want to ask you something totally different now. So we've talked about benefits in healthcare and 401k and time off and all that. What is the strangest benefit you have ever seen a company offer? Something totally out of the normal realm. We had a client years ago that it, it was a one-time benefit, but they wanted to know how could they get turkeys? How could they source and buy and distribute turkeys to their workforce at the holiday? Uh, so that kind of took us down an unusual path uh, that we hadn't seen before. Um, and, and one that, that's gratifying, and it's not so, it's not so uh, un, uh, or weird, I guess, in concept, but it is, it's, it's still unusual, and that is things like adoption assistance, you know, adoption assistance programs. And, and, you know, what does that look like? What are the parameters? You know, are there certain legal partners or teams they need to work with? So um, that's, a, that's kind of a non-standard one. Uh, but I would say, yeah, trying to source turkeys was, uh, took us on, some, took us on some, some research we hadn't done before. Any, uh, any, anybody ever asked for pet benefits? Do you offer, have anybody offering insurance for people's pets? We do. Yeah. And that, again, that's one of these kind of emerging things, probably back to some of the generational uh, motivations that you referenced uh, a few minutes ago, Linda. Yeah. Pet insurance, um, not uncommon for employers to do that. And those are interesting because when you talk about kind of the education and the, the marketing material around them, it's uh, not just dogs and cats, but it's, you know, avions and lizards and reptiles. And it's like, Ooh, okay, well, how am I going to, you know, insure my iguana and what, what's a wellness exam for an iguana look like? But uh, yeah. So we've been asking a, a, a hot or not question to all of our guests for this first year. We'll change it next year. You may have, uh, you may, if you've listened to our podcast, you may be ready for this. Steve, you, you got to start a new business. You're going to start a business uh, based on a hobby. What is that hobby and why did you choose that? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. I have heard uh, you ask that of prior guests. And, and it was, it was, it, when it was asked it, and I was watching and listening, uh, I was kind of answering it in my mind, like, oh, that's a great question. What would I do? Here's my answer on that, Dan. I would do something for seniors because of the aging population and the baby boomers, you know, of which I'm one, um, but with, with, you know, with basically memory and cognitive abilities and around, kind of around the board game thing. And, and I get a chance to see this with my mother-in-law and my mom and stepdad, and, you know, they're in their you know, 70s and 80s. And, and you know, a lot of the games that I play with you know, my friends and my kids, you know, they're, frankly, they're, there's too many moving parts. They, they, they have a, a challenging time keeping up with that. But I think if, if a person could develop some uh, – kind of a, a gamification of, you know, some logic and some thought and some draw conclusions and make inferences on things. Um, I think those could be, and specifically with seniors in mind. So, you know, you might, you might make the topics of, of, you know, of, of decades ago, you know, it might be the Frank Sinatra's and the, you know, the Fred Astaire's and the Ginger Rogers and, you know, those things rather than today's pop stars, but do something around memory and, and cognitive uh, uh, flexibility and nimbleness specifically geared for seniors that had sort of a game, kind of a game uh, uh, you know, framework around it. That's a winner. I, I, I'd, I'd line up to buy one of those. That would be awesome. Yeah. Thanks. So, so Steve, if you had a chance to do it all over again and, you know, do something different with your career, relive your career life, what's the one thing that you would do differently this time? I think we, me as one, and I had two, two fantastic, wonderful business partners and friends. Um, I think we could have pressed ourselves and stretched, you know, stretched for growth and stretched for a little more dynamic, dynamic things. We, we were always very client and we remain, you know, very client centric, which I love and wouldn't change. Um, but I, I think we, I just think we could have, we could have leaned in, leaned into things a little bit more aggressively with growth and, and opportunities. And I would probably, I'd probably say, yeah, push ourselves a little bit, a little bit faster, a little bit more than we did. A little faster, a little bit more. That's good to know. We'll see. Hey, Linda, Linda, you know what, Linda, really quick, you know, I apologize. Before you ask uh, Steve, I, I almost forgot. We're trying to do this more and more, and I noted it on my notes. Steve, do you have a book that you would, uh, that you would uh, tell all of our listeners or viewers that you'd recommend? It does not have to be a business book. It could be any type of book. What's, what's a book you'd like to recommend to folks? Um, I'll do a couple if I can real quickly. Sure. I think just kind of a, on, a, on a life and a platform for everything built upon it, I'd say The Miracle Morning uh, by Hal Elrod. 
Um, a great, a great way to literally start your day, but I think he's got a really interesting, um, you know, message there about doing some fundamental, some very fundamental things that, that people, successful people have been doing across cultures and across time and decades and, and centuries. So uh, the Miracle Morning is one. Um, and another one that I like, it's been out years ago, but I still listen to it every, every year or so called uh, The Black Swan. And that's by uh, uh, Taleb, Nassan, uh, Nassan Taleb uh, is the guy's name. And the thing I like, the black swan is this unexpected event, the kind of thing that, that nobody saw coming. But after the fact, everybody kind of says, oh, yeah, you know, why didn't we see that? Why didn't we see a pandemic on a virus that spreads around the world in a few months? And why didn't we see, you know, 9-11? And why didn't we see all these other events that in the rearview mirror, we all kind of say, yeah, we should have kind of seen that or that was should we should have recognized that as a possibility. And and his book goes through that notion about kind of how to think and, and maybe kind of how to mentally and, and again, as appropriate in a business, you, you can't, and, and Dan, you're big on this. You're very big on this in your work and your expertise with your client consulting. It's like, hey, you know, you don't know the exact peril or the exact uh, wrench in the machine that's going to happen, but you probably ought to plan on something going sideways and, and have some, some plans in place for that. That's great. Well, thank you. Those are two books we ought to go check out. And I like the way you said you'd listen to it too. So, um, so that's an, another option. Um, and I want to thank you so much for being a guest here on the Shrimp Tank. For our listeners that want to get in touch with you and learn more about your company, what you do, where do they go to get more information? Uh, the website's always good, uh, truebenefits.net. Uh, and I'm also on LinkedIn, uh, Steve Bean with True Benefits. All right. Fantastic. So um, go check that out if you're interested in finding out more about Steve and True Benefits. And make sure you check out all the replays of all our episodes on shrimptankpodcast.com forward slash Seattle, wherever you get your podcasts. I heart, uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, we are ubiquitous. And uh, follow us on our show's social media pages on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. All right. Hey, Steve, thanks for being here. Linda, as always, thanks for uh, joining me as co-host. Can't wait to have you back in, in the chair. By the way, on our Instagram page, I'm starting to do some behind the podcast curtain views. So check us out. I'm doing some live things on that. And go and like us on our Facebook page. That's where we live stream. Our next show will be Wednesday, October the 27th at 12 p.m. Pacific. Our guest will be Andrea Houston with Artitudes Designs. Uh, our, my uh, my co-host for that will be Michelle Baumberger. But right now we're out. So in the meantime, be safe, be well, and be prosperous. Because until next week, the shrimp is back in the tank. So long. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank.